Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Underground. So, as events in the Middle East have kind of progressed a little bit, and things in the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa in general have gotten a little bit more serious with, with regards to Houthi targeting, um, things seem to be getting a little bit out of hand, right? So, uh, one of the questions that I've gotten asked over the past couple of days uh, is in response to the Houthi targeting that has intensified in the Red Sea. So I thought that I would uh, take a break for a moment and answer uh, the questions I've gotten a little bit more directly with regards to the uh, Houthi crisis. So the question on everyone's mind uh, that people have asked me either in messages on Patreon or uh, via email is why has the United States not declared war on Yemen and or is the United States planning to declare a war on Yemen? Like, where is this going? Like, are, are we looking at Yemen being a vector for World War III going more kinetic than it already is? So to answer these sort of questions, I've gotten uh, a, a little bit of uh, a few notes here together, and uh, I thought I would just kind of run through some of the more um, common explanations. Again, this is all my opinion, but this is a very interesting and very good question because it does have implications uh, moving forward. So the Houthis in Yemen have sunk or uh, they have sunk one ship, the merchant vessel Rubamar, and two other vessels right now as I speak are sinking in the Red Sea and in the Gulf of Aden, the merchant vessel Tudor and the merchant vessel Verbena. Um, so why has the United States not declared war on Yemen because of this, right? You know, ships being torpedoed or hit with mines or drones or something like that is usually a pretty good vector throughout history for some kind of combat action taking place, right? Well, let's start with the culturally acceptable reasons right now, uh, things that are not really inflammatory and the reasons which, you know, you would probably hear at some kind of Pentagon press statement. So the very first reason why the United States has not officially declared war on Yemen is mostly diplomatic. Uh, and mostly it's kind of a game of semantics. The United States does not want to declare war on Yemen because in doing so, they would have to formally recognize that the Houthi government is Yemen. And no one wants to do that. So going back to when this conflict started, you know, we saw a lot of diplomatic, you know, tete-a-tete -tete going back and forth because no one wants to state the obvious, which, uh, and this is where the answer gets a little bit more controversial, is that the Houthis really do control Yemen. Um, so a few years ago, back really in kind of the 2015 era, uh, there was a coup uh, in Yemen and the military um, council that sort of ended up ruling the country. They control the capital, they control almost all of the trade routes, they control the majority of the land mass of Yemen. You may look at a CNN map and say and see, okay, well, which parts of Yemen uh, do the Houthis control? Um, I'm not really convinced these maps are accurate because Yemen is basically controlled almost entirely by the Houthis, uh, the Houthi rebels, right? So this is why you see reports from even international agencies saying the Houthi rebels. They're referring to the same group of people who control the capital, who control the trade routes, who control the military, who control the economy, who control the almost the entirety of Yemen, except for some parts out in the eastern part of the country where the legitimate government allegedly is still kind of running things. Now, I don't believe that for one minute. I think that the Houthis control Yemen, and I think that's been obvious for a very long time, but the international community does not want to say this because this means that they would be recognizing uh, and giving diplomatic status to a nation which was overthrown by you know, uh, a military coup. So they don't want to do that. Similar situation with some of the, um, what do they call it, the coup belt, uh, the uh, uh, military council belt of all these nations throughout sub-Saharan Africa, which are now being ruled by basically just you know, warlords. Um, you know, the United States, the international community at large, Western Europe, doesn't really want to acknowledge the fact that Yemen is run almost entirely by the Houthis. So there's that. That's why the United States will probably never formally declare a war against Yemen because, well, the United States claims that, well, why, why would we be at war with Yemen? We're not at war with Yemen. We're at war with the Houthis. Do you see? So 
this is one of those things where it's it's just a game of political semantics, and that's probably why it's not going to happen. Now, if we go a little bit further and start playing these diplomatic games a little bit more, we realize, okay, well, why would the United States go to war or increase some kind of military you know, presence, operation, whatever, when the Houthis aren't targeting us? So we get into the definition of what is a U.S. ship really quickly, because uh, someone, you know, not me, but someone could make the claim that no U.S. ships have been attacked. You could make that claim. Uh, because in maritime, in the maritime community, it gets really confusing really quickly because you have uh, ships uh, where they're flagged, who owns the ships, who operates the ships, and whether uh, who the ships are affiliated with and who they're influenced by, right? So you could say, okay, well, this ship isn't, it's not flagged in the United States because most ships are not flagged in the United States. It's not owned by an American company. Uh, it's not crewed by an American crew, but it is affiliated with the United States and Israel. Okay, do you see how this kind of gets into some really difficult stuff? Because what did the Houthis say right when they started this whole campaign, this whole war, right? They said they were going to target American, or they, they said they were going to target Israel-affiliated ships. Well, what's the definition of affiliated, do you see? Virtually no ships are flagged in Israel, but virtually no ships are flagged in the United States. Most ships are like flagged in Bermuda or somewhere because of the weird international law kind of way things work out. So it's not really strange, you know, if the United, if the Houthis were going to be targeting American flagged ships, that there's very few of them, right? So there's that. Well, then the Houthis, you know, sort of clarify by saying, okay, well, affiliated means flagged in uh, the United States or in Israel and uh, we're going to also start targeting ships that are run by or affiliated with American or Israeli companies. Now, that gets a little bit more specific, right? So now you've got a ship which uh, can be owned by an Israeli company, and that's who they're targeting. And, and this is consistent with what the Houthis have done so far. Uh, but once we start getting a little bit more down into it, it's like, well, you, you know, the Houthis have targeted ships that are not flagged in Israel, they're not run by an Israeli company, but they're owned by a company that was at one time owned by an Israeli billionaire. So now we're just talking about not even affiliated anymore, just influenced by. Do you see how we can get into real deep political terrain really quickly with this? So you can get somebody in a nice suit and tie, get behind the White House press podium and say, well, no U.S. ships have been attacked. Well, Define U.S. ships. If we're talking about U.S. flagged ships, then yeah, okay, fine. If we're talking about uh, ships that are, are, are owned by an American company, okay, fine. But what about ships that have cargo destined for Western ports? Do you see? That's why the Houthis are going after these American or Israeli ships. They're not really affiliated with either country, but they're affiliated through like six degrees of separation kind of thing. So that's something to keep in mind as well is... You can still make the argument that the Houthis aren't attacking us. They're not attacking Israel. They're attacking very loose definitions here in the international community. A third point that is a little bit more socially acceptable to make is that the United States is kind of at war with the Houthis. They have launched Operation Prosperity Guardian, which is one of those sort of maritime security kind of freedom of the seas, freedom of navigation kind of missions. The U.S. Navy is hard at work down there blowing stuff up and trying uh, and failing most of the time to provide missile defense for cargo ships. So they are. They're target. We, we basically are at war in Yemen. We are uh, conducting missile strikes. Uh, who the target engagement authority is, I don't know. Uh, but we are launching missiles uh, into Yemen and we're claiming self-defense, but we're taking out things like radar sites, uh, staged ships, uh, missile, uh, missile sites, things like that. So it's the United States, and I've pointed this out in a few previous wire reports, is the United States is very slowly sleepwalking towards an open conflict in Yemen, but it's one of those sort of counter-ISIS conflicts to where it's really just bombing things from the air. Uh, and that kind of gets really sticky because the U.S. Navy can can shoot as many tomahawks as they want to into Yemen, and it isn't really going to make any difference, as we already know, right? So 
again, you could make the argument that the United States is kind of at war in Yemen. We're launching strikes in self-defense, right? Right? We're launching strikes in self-defense into a nation where Congress has not declared war. You know, it, it just it just has the whole vibe of, well, this is a peacekeeping operation again. You know, this is one of those conflicts where we're, we're getting a lot of use out of the air quotes, as we can clearly see. So, again, it gets very diplomatically challenging. Now, coming out of the less controversial reasons, let's get into some of the more hot-button reasons as to why the United States is probably not looking at conducting a war in Yemen. My opinion is uh, that the United States thinks that it probably can't win a war there, so why start one? Um, my guess is that there's a lot of talk in the Pentagon right now about, well, what could we do in Yemen? Because it's very clear, we learn this, we constant, the U.S. military constantly has to relearn this lesson over time, but uh, the U.S. Navy is figuring out, okay, our ballistic missile defense and our cruise missile defense kind of sucks. Um, you know, the SeaWiz system, you know, the Phalanx system and all that kind of stuff, or, or the Army's version, which is the CRAM system, uh, you know, it works fine. It works great. Uh, however, some of the more long-range stuff, you know, your Raytheon $2 million specials don't work so well, especially if they're trying to defend a, a cargo vessel that may be many, many miles away. So the U.S. Navy's shipboard defenses to defend the ship, you know, the Navy ship itself, that's, that's all well and good. We've got, you know, we're getting a pretty good return on, on taxpayer investment there. But if we're trying to use our Navy missiles to defend a cruise, uh, a, a, a civilian ship against a cruise missile, you know, that's a lot harder to do than you might think. Um, and it turns out we're not getting a good investment at all because the Houthis are, are lobbing a $20,000 missile and we're spending... Well, we're shooting them down with two missiles every time, generally speaking, that's the doctrine, and those missiles cost $2 million a piece. So, you know, we're not getting a super great return on investment on that. Uh, so, you know, you could, again, make the argument that the U.S. Navy is actually at war with Yemen. We're just not saying so. It's one of those peacekeeping maritime security things. Now, when it comes to what you might traditionally view as like a, a hot war, like a, a, a straight up, we're going to war kind of thing, uh, there's probably a lot of people in the Pentagon kicking around the idea that an air war ain't going to work uh, and that you're going to have to put people on the ground. And as you might imagine, that, that just opens up a whole can of badness uh, because you can have a more moderate position. And I'm sure that a lot of people hold the position that a limited in scope uh, special forces led intervention into Yemen to overthrow or depose the political leadership of Yemen would probably be the best chance of success. And even that is probably going to be very, very hard to do. You have to remember, Yemen has been at war with Saudi Arabia for, what, 20 years now? You know, 15, 20 years now? And Saudi Arabia has been using all those shiny American toys as, you know, F-16s, um, F-22s, I think, F-35s for sure. And they've been trying to target the, the Houthi government for a very long time. And look at how what the Saudis have done. Basically nothing. Uh, they haven't really done any, they haven't put a dent in any of it. So there's this general consensus that... Um, you're probably going to have to have a ground force and nobody wants to have that conversation. They want to figure out how can we, how can we do this from the air? And it's just not going to, it's just not going to freaking work. Uh, if that's what you're wanting to do, it's one of those things where there are no good solutions. Uh, if you want to stop the Houthi targeting, you maybe have to think outside the box. Um, but if you're wanting to stop the Houthi targeting more directly and you're wanting to restore freedom of the seas there, you're going to have to develop a lot of things really quickly. You're going to have to have shipboard defenses that are really good, which are just not there. Uh, we need 10 to 15 more years to develop a, a ballistic missile defense system for cargo vessels and then even then trying to get the co companies to buy it. It's just cheaper for them to go around the Horn of Africa. That's kind of the theme as to why why bother with this. You're going to tell me that really, what are the options? There aren't any really good ones. The options are to send troops into Yemen, overthrow the government with force, do a whole Saddam thing again, 
and hope that that works out for the best. The other solution is to just ignore it. Ignore the whole region, send all the ships around Africa, make them pay more for fuel and for the logistical nightmare that that is, and of course get the civilian ships to assume more risk by going through more treacherous waters, you know, off the Cape of Good Hope. Um, you know, just assume that risk because it's a it's a heck of a lot better than putting you know the 82nd Airborne on the ground and you know Sanaa. It's not really something that anyone politically wants to do, especially during an election year. You're going to tell me we're going to do a whole 2003 invasion style operation in Yemen during an election year when everyone and their cousin is getting out of the military and basically every single military veteran who's worth their salt is telling their kids, do not enlist, do not go into the military. You know, it's, it's just right now it's a tough time for the military. And I, I just don't think that or rather, I think with a pretty high level of confidence that people in the Pentagon are thinking, yeah, we can't do this. This is not something that's feasible. So public support-wise, we're not going to get the American public support to go target the Houthis in Yemen more directly than we already are. Sure, Surely not for a ground force. Uh, we probably could do some limited secret squirrel stuff in Yemen, and I'm absolutely certain they already have been doing that kind of thing. Definitely reconnaissance, for sure. Um, that just makes common sense, right? But anything, anything more than that is going to be pretty, pretty bad, because you got to remember the Pentagon's probably quite risk-averse due to the first factor, public support just not being there. Also, militarily, do we have the hardware to make this happen? There, there, are pro there are probably, uh, not probably, there are definitely uh, growing sentiments within the defense community that the United States couldn't occupy their way out of a paper bag right now. The United States can barely uh, maintain the security of their own bases stateside. You know, we have gate crashers running into U.S. military bases all the time, and nobody seems to be doing much about it. Uh, so there's a growing sentiment that the military, you know, you know, all respect to them do where it's due, I guess. Uh, but the military is just not what it used to be. And there's growing um, uh, assumptions that the U.S. military really can't militarily do the things that it claims it can do. You know, and we see this due to Ukraine. You know, part of me, you know, part of me thinks, well... Uh, well, first of all, the entirety of me thinks that the Ukrainian war is largely being run by NATO and the United States. There's probably not a single Ukrainian general that is making one decision at all. It's all being run by the U.S. military, and I know that this may be controversial to say, but I think that's fairly obvious at this point. But regardless of that, I honestly think, you know, part of me thinks that uh, the Ukrainians would probably be better off just not listening to the U.S. Uh, in some regards and just doing their own thing. We already see this with the weapons that they're being issued. They're not really what the United States is giving Ukraine, both in terms of doctrine and in terms of the hardware, is not working clearly. So you take that same mentality and you apply it to Yemen, you know. How many generals or how many commanders or senior defense officials or even senior defense uh, companies, you know, private capital, you know, how many of these people can really sell a congressman on their capabilities in Yemen? I don't think any of them can. You know, I just don't think it's something that we could we could do. I mean, it's it's a hard sell already because Yemen's got really rugged terrain. It's a big country. Logistics are really hard to do there. Uh, the Yemenis, uh, the, the Houthis control a good portion of you know, all the key terrain there. Uh, we would have to build a lot of bases right here along the Saudi border, and then hopefully the Saudis would help us out. I'm sure they would, but, you know, we'd have to build that infrastructure. And even then, that's a long flight to where most of, where most of the fighting is going to have to take place. You know, it's, it's not an easy, it's not an easy place. It's not flat, you know, it's not like built for the equipment that we have. And the United States has proven time and time again that we can barely manage a, a, a political, you know, embassy evacuation kind of thing. So, you know, again, not to just take cheap shots, you know, at the defense community in, at large. It, it, it's really just becoming kind of palpable that can, could we, could we invade Yemen? Could we do it successfully? 
I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. And because of that uncertainty, my guess is that at the Pentagon, there's a lot, a lot more uncertainty and that uncertainty probably carries forward. And, you know, there's probably just not a whole lot of people that are willing to do it, especially considering what's the other option? What's the alternative? Costing more money? So you're going to tell me that I can keep my job, I can not lose American lives, I can uh, basically neutralize the threat, and all I'm going to do is spend more American tax dollars? I'll take the tax dollar solution. That's what defense officials are probably thinking. Just send the ships around the Horn of Africa and wait until this whole thing boils over. And that kind of... Um, leads into the next very controversial solution or, or, or point I'd, I'd like to make, which is that um, one of the big reasons why the defense industry, I think personally, just again, my opinion, one of the reasons why I think that they're super, super keen on just kind of ignoring the issue and flinging some, you know, Navy missiles at things and, and just kind of going with that route. One of the reasons why I think that they're super keen with this and they're not really looking to amplify this as like a boogeyman situation is because it causes difficult questions to be asked, such as why are the Houthis targeting shipping anyway? You're going to tell me that the Houthis have maintained control of Yemen since 2013, 2015, I, I guess if you want to say that. And you're going to tell me that they've only started targeting Western shipping in the past six months, or rather since a specific date, you know, starts asking very difficult questions, um, such as uh, the question to be asked uh, fairly, fairly commonly, I guess, is, well, um, if the Israeli occupation of Gaza were to stop, would that not mean that the Houthis would stop targeting shipping? I don't know the answer to that, and I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there uh, who would say no, uh, that the Houthis are just going to continue targeting anyway. Um, but I think it's I think it's kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, if the Houthis were so hell bent on taking down the West, then why did they only start their their maritime targeting operation after October seventh? And the not even that, but the, the follow-on events that occurred in the weeks after that. You know, it, it's like one of those things where you, you really have to ask a question. And, and me even asking the question is going to anger quite a lot of people. But the question is, why is it? Why Just take a step back for a minute and, and ask yourself, why is it that, whether it's true or not, I don't know, I don't know. But why is it? that an insurgent group, if you call them that, the, the Houthis, an insurgent rebel warlord type group walking around with the AK-47s and the standard, you know, terrorist looking garb. Why is it these people out of everyone else on the planet, why is it that in 2024, these people are claiming they are going to war to stop a humanitarian crisis? Does that not just blow your mind for a second. You know, whether or not it's true, I, I don't really know, or, and I don't really care, but I find it to be very, very odd that the Houthi rebels in Yemen, they are fighting for what the West should say is or a humanitarian cause. Like, that's what they claim. Again, I'm not saying that it's true or not. They could just be, the counter-argument to that as well, the Houthis are just taking the opportunity of discord being sowed in the Middle East to take shots at Israel. Okay, fine, whatever. But man, it, 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 it probably makes a press secretary sweat a pretty good bit because you've got the Houthis who get on their TV and say, yeah, we're, we're targeting American ships in the Red Sea or targeting Israeli ships in the Red Sea. Okay, Mr. Houthi man, why? Why are you going to war with Israel? Well, because they're killing civilians in Gaza. That's what the Houthis say. Okay. All right. Um, that's a new one. Um, it, we don't have the same answer. Okay. Well, Al Qaeda. Let's go back to 1998. Al Qaeda. Why do you hate America? Well, because America is evil. All right. Fine. All right. North Korea. Why do you hate America? Well, because the imperial imperialist capitalists. Okay. Whatever. China. Why do you hate America? Well, because you know uh, America bad. 
all right, fine, whatever. Houthis, why do you hate America? Well, because they're supporting Israelis killing children in Gaza, allegedly. Okay. That's new, you know. So people like me have got to talk for half an hour to explain the strangeness of how we get to where we're at. So you guys may think it's a simple question. Why is it the United States has not gone to war with Yemen? Why is that? Well, <laughs> I think it's largely twofold. I think the answer is probably the more controversial reasons. One, we probably couldn't win the war if we started it. And two, if we start the war, we got to answer some questions about that war, such as, you know, it, 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 we needed a weapons of mass destruction claim to get into Iraq to take out Saddam, did we not? That was needed to, pers to persuade the American people. The Houthis are claiming that they are waging their war on humanitarian grounds. It's a little bit harder to defend against. Whether or not it's true, again, whatever. Uh, but the claim is being made, right? So now you, once the claim is made, you got to respond to it in the international arena. And I just don't think that people are prepared. The American people just are, are not prepared as well. Even people who are informed in, in America and think that they know everything uh, are not really prepared to answer these really tough questions. Uh, and, and more importantly, they kind of dance around what all this means. Now, the reason why I've dedicated so much time to talking about this is that I still would not discount the United States getting more directly involved in Yemen. There is growing sentiment. I don't know how much I don't know how much I agree with it, but I will express it because it gets expressed to me nearly daily. There is growing sentiment in the United States that a another 9/11 style event will be needed to either distract from what's going on in Israel Gaza or to enable more substantial actions in the Israel Gaza war. I don't know either way, but I can say that I'm not discounting the potential. Right now, you've got the White House, whether or not you agree with it or not, okay? I, 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 it's gotten to the point where I, I just don't want to talk about it because it just, brings, it just brings about so much ire that I just don't have the bandwidth to deal with. But right now, I have to say it anyway, right now the White House itself is saying, look, BB, you are directly trying to drag the United States into fighting your war for you. You know, that's what the White House, that's a, the White House's official freaking policy. You know, they have said this directly. So, uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know, it's up for you to decide. I really don't, I really don't care. Uh, but there's growing evidence that that's the case. I mean, you know, it, it sure does seem like that. And, you know what would be a really fantastic way to get the United States uh, into the Gaza-Israel thing? Is if we were to put Americans in close proximity uh, to the whole Gaza uh, area and then target them in some way. You know, almost as if, you know, we just were to get them to do, I don't know, say a humanitarian bridge. You know, some kind of pier or something uh, that's just a sitting duck that doesn't, re it's not really doing anything. Um, you know, it is giving some humanitarian aid, but not nearly enough. But it conveniently puts Americans right there. And you know what would be really super, super great to, to drag America into the war as well? Is if we, without telling the Americans, we landed an Israeli helicopter near the pier. And we now suddenly made that pier a military target for Hamas or Hezbollah or whoever. You know, that would be a really great way to drag the United States into the war. But you know, you know what would also be a great way to drag the United States into this mess, even more so than we already are, is to kick stuff off with the with the Yemenis, with the Houthis down there. Um, you know, the United States right now is exceptionally ripe for a whole Gulf of Tonkin or even a, like a Lusitania kind of situation. So, you know, trouble on the high seas could be afoot. And let me, let me put it to you this way. I absolutely would not be taking any cruises or any passenger, any passenger vessels going through this region. I think that's fairly obvious, but I'll say it more explicitly clearly because the potential is very, very ripe for either a legitimate action or a false flag action to drag the United States more directly into varying conflicts throughout the Middle East. So... I know that you're probably expecting, I myself was expecting a little bit more of a shorter answer to this question, but 
I think the conversation, I think this question really triggers a conversation and it really kind of triggers a lot more complex thoughts than just, well, you know, the U.S. is dumb or the U.S. is stupid. Well, no, it's more to it than that. Um, it, you know, the military can't do it, but they could do it, but not with the support they have now and not with the training they have now. And let's not forget that, you know, this is an election year and just just to plant the seed, just to plant the seed for what may happen in the future this little uh this little uh last bullet point here on this last slide uh it is probably going to be a little bit more important than you might think so again wrapping things up just to remind myself of of uh what's probably going to happen next well like i have here on the slide probably more of the same uh, probably, you know, increased naval strikes, uh, more naval targeting, you know, we're going to probably start stationing a, a carrier or two instead of in the Arabian Gulf or the Arabian Sea in that sort of region, probably more down in the Red Sea area. However, it hasn't really been super effective. You know, a carrier is really not the best tool for the job unless you're conducting like airstrikes into Yemen, which we have done, but uh, you're probably just going to see more of that and it's just going to go, it's just going to slip right by because, you know, the mainstream media didn't want to talk about it because it's not interesting. Uh, but, you know, one of these bullet points right here just it kind of reminds me and it reminds everyone else out there to kind of be aware that the United States is probably ignoring this issue because we are understanding that conflict in Lebanon might actually um, make this event OBE or um, overcome by events. So the, the term OBE or overcome by events is a term that is used um, traditionally in a more military context, but basically it means it doesn't matter anymore. You know, um, well, we're going to strike this target over here uh, because, you know, it's a, it's a you know, legitimate military target. Oh, don't worry about that target anymore. It's OBE, meaning the front line has shifted. Don't bother with it anymore, because even if you do strike it, it isn't going to matter. I think the whole U.S. government is planning on Yemen being OBE by the expansion of the war in uh, Gaza-Israel area. So, you know, I, I know this is a very, very controversial topic for a lot of people, but I think that's the answer. I think the United States is planning for Israel to go to war with Lebanon, and because of that, they don't really give one hoot about Yemen. They're just biding their time and and hoping that people can just take the southern route around the Cape of Good Hope and, you know, screw you to Mayersk kind of situation and, you know, just pay more money in shipping and the price of goods becomes more expensive. Since when has the U.S. government ever cared about rising consumer goods costs or the rising costs of anything, really, especially over the past few years? So they're happy to take the bullet. They're happy to, to keep lobbing missiles at the Houthis. They don't really care. They're not really interested in solving the problem militarily because it's too costly, both in human lives and in experience and in equipment. And the U.S. government probably can't, uh, probably can't afford it at the moment. You know, they can they can add one they can add a bunch of ones and zeros to their bank accounts all they want to, but it isn't gonna solve the fact that you still gotta have the munition in your hand if you're gonna to go to war and our defense production capacity is just not there. So you know, all of these very highly controversial answers to a very simple question are really highlighting just how complex the world has gotten and how nonsensical it has become to even explain or even discuss the tiniest possible detail. You know, I, I, hint of, I hint at it all the time and I deliberately say it when I think I can get away with it. Uh, but man, this, this whole Israel-Gaza conflict, it, it, it is, militarily speaking, not that interesting. Um, it's a, just a classic, you know, war in the Middle East that is very, very similar to what we've been, you know, what we've seen in the past. But on the information front, man, Man, it has changed. It really, it really has changed. You've got literally sometimes you've got cases of, of well, we can't ask, we can't answer this question as to why Maersk now has to go around the Cape of Good Hope because when we answer that question, it's going to cause other questions to be asked about what's going on in Gaza and what's going on with Israel. And I have never seen a conflict like this in in my whole life, and I've never read about a conflict where information has been so weaponized except 
for a couple of other conflicts uh, throughout the history of, of the world. And, you know, it's not very often that you get a, a case of, well, wait a minute, how is it that the Yemenis taking a, uh, t- taking a, 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 a remote control boat and detonating it, you know, uh, right over the rudder of a commercial vessel, how does that incident cause questions about World War II? Well, you know, I'll leave you guys to fill in the gaps, but man, I tell you, it, it's gotten rough out there, and there, and you and you really see the frustration when it comes to people trying to talk about these issues, and they really get to a point where they're like, "Yeah, man, I, 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 I can't explain that," because it causes a lot of other very serious questions to be asked, and we're just not ready for it. The American populace couldn't give one hoot. The American populace couldn't put Afghanistan on a map. They couldn't point it out. We were there for 20 years. Much less Yemen. They don't care. They may the American populace out there, even you know conservatives and liberals alike, man. They really just don't care. They may say they do, but they just don't. Um, they really don't care to get to the bottom of the truth because the truth is very, very inconvenient sometimes. So, again, I, I hate to be exceptionally ranty today, but I, uh, you know, the mood struck, I guess, and I, I felt like I needed to kind of elaborate on this because it is a very interesting question. Why is the United States not going to war with Yemen? Well. Well, we have to take the Vladimir Putin approach, and we have to go all the way back to the early 1900s and really get to the bottom of this. So that's one of the reasons why. I can say, though, I can say the Houthis are causing a lot of questions to be asked. Um, you know, I don't think that... I think it's very hard to for, for anyone to agree that the Houthi cause is just. However, however... They are causing very, very challenging questions to be asked, right? So who, who'd who have thought that a kind of like a, a nation being run by war, warlords in the Middle East, a nation where nobody really cared what they were doing at all until recently, um, the very smallest actions by them, to, they, they've, they've sunk, what, three, three commercial ships. You know, out of the thousands of ships that go around the earth every single day, they've sunk three of them. Uh, with semi-improvised munitions, and now we're having great existential crises being caused by the questions that that this kind of incident is bringing about. So, again, I know um, uh, at times these kind of explanations get quite verbose, but I thought this might be a little bit helpful uh, for some of you out there. So, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it. I'll think I'll leave it there, and 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 see what uh, what backlash this one results in. Um, but I think it may result in some pretty interesting discussions moving forward. So, again, thank you all for watching. I know this is probably a lot more um, a lot more than what anybody bargained for this morning, but uh, we'll roll with it and we'll uh, continue on with the reports and we'll see uh, how this whole crisis works out. Hopefully, it doesn't expand. Hopefully, we can all have a peaceful end to this salute, this this situation. But uh, we always have to be on the lookout for if this um, uh, takes a, a, a rather more violent move into uh, less than peaceful situations. So, again, something to keep in mind. Just be advised that people you don't care about and a nation you don't care about has a way of finding you at the end of the day, especially when it comes to commercial shipping. So, um, you know, something to, to keep in mind moving forward. So, again, I've talked this one enough to death, so I think I'll roll it up for today. But thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time. And as always, fight in the shade.